Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habitu fillah Question was asked Assalamu alaikum What are the tools to begin in Dawah to Salafiyyah? I'm so lost I don't know where to start When I reverted to Islam it was with Jamaat al-Tabliq and I learned absolutely nothing Shukran for the advice Afwan May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas wa thabat Bless us all with ilm al-nafi Rizkan tayyibu amna mutaqabbilin and bless us to all be a benefit to ourselves, our families, and to others. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. So as far as the tools to begin in the Dawah to Salafiyyah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was riding on a donkey with uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said, In this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Mu'adh, Ya Mu'adh, tadri ma haqqallu ala ibadi wa ma haqqli ibadi ala Allah kultu Allah wa rasooluhu wa alam Qala haqqallu ala ibadi an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin wa haqqli ibadi ala Allah an la yu'adhba min la yushriku bi shayin The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was riding on a donkey with Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and he said Ya Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon his servant and the right of the servant upon Allah and he said Allah wa rasooluhu wa alam he said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, the right of Allah uh, upon his servant is that he worships him, meaning the servant worships him and him alone and, and doesn't ascribe any partners to him. And the right of the servant upon Allah is that uh, Allah will not punish him if he does so, meaning if he perfects tawheed, meaning also that the servant cannot force that Right upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given the servant that right. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. What we learn from this hadith, we learn da'wah to Salafiyya. That is the da'wah to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's the da'wah to tawheed. It's the da'wah to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So it's not a special thing that you need special tools. You, we don't need to give you a toolbox. We don't need to give you a McDonald's keypad or a keychain or a free iPad. Anything. You know, this is something that you have with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Da'wah to Salafiyyah. And let me illustrate this from our Shaykh, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wad'i, Allah yarhamuhu. I love this statement of his, and it's just such a beautiful statement. And another aspect of its beauty comes from actually listening to the Shaykh articulate it and knowing something about his da'wah and having seen and met the Shaykh. It just really brings it home because he was... And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best his heart. And, but out of any human being that I've ever met in my life, he actualized and had a love for the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what he said, and this will give you the da'wah to Ahl sunnah the da'wah to Salafiyyah. So if you want to know, here's your toolbox. Put this in your tools. He said, da'wah to Ahl sunnah da'wah to min kitabi la ila kitabi la. ومن سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم إلى سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. So he said the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah. This is the da'wah to Salafia. It's the da'wah from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah, and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. هذا هو هذا دعوت Ahl Sunnah. So it's not a, it's not a Hizbi group. It's not a a cult and it's not a new clique and it's not you're with us or you're against us. No, it's based on the usul of Islam and the principles. It's based on the hadith of Jibreel in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting with his companions and a man came up. Shididu biyad thiabi He had an excessively white thob and excessively black hair. And he said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni on Islam. He said, Oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Islam and Tashadu in La ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad the Rasulullah wa to kimu salat wa to tiyu zakat wa to sawm ramadan wa to hajj al bayt and istatata ilayhi sabil. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned the five pillars of Islam as an answer. That's what Dawah to Salafi is. Dawah to Salafi is the rest of the hadith, is Iman, the, the six pillars of Iman. And it is Ihsan and Ta'budullah ka'annaka tura fa in lam tukun turahu fa innu yarak. It is to worship Allah by as if you see him. And because you can't see him, know that he sees you. 
all that's the Dawah of Salafia. All of that is your Usul of Salafia. Salafia is everything from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih, meaning the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, their followers, you know, those who took knowledge from the, the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, and those who took knowledge from them. And then all the ulama and people of righteousness who followed them in righteousness up until the, the, the hour is established. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, The best people was my generation, then those who followed them, then those who followed them. The Prophet ﷺ said, He said, It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, you know, Abu Bakr, Umar, Wa Uthman, Wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. That's the sun. The Prophet sallallahu also mentioned about firqa al najiyah He mentioned about um, uh, the most important sifa or characteristic of them because he, after he mentioned that the, the ummah would break into sects as the Jews and the Christians would, he said about those, because they said, who, who are the ones who are going to be saved, Ya Rasulullah, in, in paraphrasing. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, uh, Men, those who are upon my sunnah, uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, those who uh, who follow me and what my companions are upon today. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu also mentioned the sifat of Ahl sunnah, the characteristics of Ahl sunnah, and that they would be around. He said, "La tazal ta'ifatum min ummati zahirin al haq hatta yatihum Allah hatta yatihum amr Allah hum ala dhalik." There won't cease to be a group from my ummah that is on the truth uh, until the hour is established. So it's following the haq. The salaf, the 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 classical scholars, they used to say, "La yuraf al haq uh, bi rijal, walakin yuraf al rijal bil haq," meaning. That you don't know the truth by men. So as Salafi, I don't call you to Sheikh so-and-so. I, I love Sheikh Fozan. I don't say you have to be a blind follower of Fozan. I love Imam al-Albani. I don't say you have to be a blind follower of Imam al-Albani. I love Imam Muqbil. I don't say that you have to follow Imam Muqbil. I love Imam bin Baz. But you don't have to be a blind follower of Imam bin Baz. I love Imam bin Uthaymin al I don't say you have to be a blind follower of uh, bin Uthaymin. Or any of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, Sheikh Rabi, or whoever. That's not the qaida. The principle is not that the haq is with them at all times. But the principle goes back to the nasus, it goes back to the text. The Prophet وسلم, said, Kulubna Adam khatta wa khayna khatayna tawabun. All the children of Adam commit sins and make mistakes, but the best of those are those who repent. So everyone makes mistakes. And it's jihad, sometimes the issue of aqidah, sometimes falling into an issue in bid'ah. But is there a soul from Ahl Sunnah? So basically, the tools that you need is seeking knowledge. Seek knowledge. And seek knowledge from Ahl Sunnah Tiwul Jama'ah. Seek knowledge from those people who call to the book and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the Salaf as Salih. So it's muqayyid, it's, it's restricted. Because you don't want to call, there are people who they. Everyone, the extreme Sufis, they worship graves and they they say, Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al kareem And they say, Qala Nabiyyana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they'll mention a hadith. And they might even mention one of the salaf and try to distort its meaning to support their itaqad. Or they might mention one of their salaf, a person of, of bid'ah, a person of innovation and desires to support their itaqad, their creed. So you want to follow... You want to learn from those who call to the book and the sunnah and the, and the, uh, with the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. Those are, the, those are the tools. And that's the scale you want to, to, uh, to use. And to walk along the law, Allah is going to give you tawfiq. If you want the truth, Allah is going to give you tawfiq. But if you let your desires kind of lead you, you get distorted and follow some takfiris, Go back to Jamaat al Tabli, go to Akhwan al Muslimin because they have some good political stances or political points or whatever the case may be. Then this is how we go astray because we let our desires and some of the things that we like to uh, uh, to lead us astray.
and perhaps even affect our ittiqad, our creed, or affect our methodology. So that means the methodology goes against the sunnah. The methodology goes against the uh, 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 the the salaf, sabila mu'minin. So in essence, those are just some of the nusus that show you what the tools that you need is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ اللَّهُ وَسَلْفِ اللَّهِ ذِنْبِكْ Know that verily there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and seek forgiveness for the believing men and believing women. women. So letting us know that from the usul of Ahlul Sunnah is having knowledge, knowledge of Tawheed, how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly, practice it, and seeking forgiveness for yourself and the believers. So that means you have you have a relationship with all the believers. As long as they're Muslim, you have a relationship. Even if it's from Ahl Bidah, you have a relationship with them. You should want good for them. You want them to be called. You don't want them to be destroyed and killed or whatever. You don't want them to be, you know, unless their Bidah is so harmful and they are so harmful to the Ummah. For example, we don't have any mercy for now these uh, ISIS fighters who are being captured. This is just an example who are now saying, you know, we want our countries to take us back. Well, you're the one who burned up your passport. Ahl Sunnah was telling you not to go. You joined these bandits. Now that the bandits have fallen, now you're going to go cry to your country who you make take fear of the Muslims there and, and, and support the bombings and support the killings everywhere and all the other extremism. And you expect even a disbelieving government to now take you under their arm and cradle you? Come on now. Come on, you gave up your life when you when you left for that because you believed that that was the path. So you went to your desires, even though you thought you wanted something good. You thought it was the Khalifa. You thought it was. You thought they were Ahl Sunnah. We, but you should have listened to Ahl Sunnah. Those people who you criticize, the people you make takfir of, the people you call murjia, who are Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a. So this is the point, Allah, my dear brother in Islam, is that you want to gain uh, correct Islamic knowledge. You want to know who you're gaining knowledge from, uh, and you don't want to uh, have blind prejudice to the person you're making taking knowledge from. You have to realize that they make mistakes and they are correct in some issues, but you want to learn so that way you have the tools so you have so you know the 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 usul of Ahl Sunnah. So, usul of Ahl Sunnah is many uh, foundation principles that you find from the books of the Salaf. You find that they talk about the, of course, Islam in general. And how to understand Islam. And that's what makes Ahl Sunnah different from uh, a lot of those other groups on how they look at the revelation. You know, that they look at the Vahir and the Sus. Uh, uh, that's mostly. And then, unless there's other evidence to show that it's not, that we're not looking at the apparent meaning of the text. Whereas other groups, they'll say, no, we're using our intellect. For example, Ashari, Diobandi, Naqshbandi. Um, Maturidiya, all of these groups, they are all various manifestations from the banner of Ahl Kalam. And they, the way they look at the Nasus in general, is they make taqdeem, they give some preference to their intellect, for example, especially when it comes to Al Asma, the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will give precedence to their intellect over the actual. Uh, text. If Allah says he rose above his throne, Ahl Sunnah says he rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty. We don't know how. But those guys say, no, we're scared that that, that is resembling the creation. So it must mean. So we need to change the meaning. This is what how they do. It, it, so it's the intellect. So And they, they have various levels of, of deviation. The closest to us is the Ashadis, especially uh, you know, probably in the earlier times, and perhaps even now, except for those extreme Ashadis that have, which most of them do have a lot of extreme Sufism in there and, and talking about, you know, how they, you know, maybe seek some intercession with the dead or go to the graves and, and you know, dua to the saints and things like this, some of them, probably a lot of them. So, and that, that takes research to go into that issue more. But the point being is learning the usul of Ahl Sunnah. So it's learning, uh, it's learning about who Allah is uh, and how to worship him properly. Learning who the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is and how to follow him in order to have your deeds accepted by Allah azza wa jal. And, you know, 
knowing the textual evidences in order to support your understanding of the religion. And those, your understanding should be in accordance with the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'in. And there's a lot of evidence to support that. And there are many beneficial books. Uh, and some of the books I would recommend to start with, like Asul al-Thalatha, Kuwait al-Arba, the Nawaqid al-Islam, the meaning of La ilaha illallah, all those things you can get free and some of them explain. But make sure you get them from Salafi websites because I've noticed I've downloaded some in English and from certain speakers and you see that they have some takfiri orientation so they use excellent Salafi nasul, excellent Salafi text and then they make some of their own distors distortions and that's what you have with a lot of the takfiris, a lot of the modern day takfiris they uh, are you know they may have many of the usul of Ahl Sunnah but they go astray on some issues of menhaj and methodology on how to practice and on making takfir of other Muslims and especially the leaders and those who disagree with them and their description of Ahl Sunnah as murjia and all, all kind of other uh, strange uh, ittiqad and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.